Adobe Creative Educator community, welcome to our weekly Adobe Creative Educator show. For those who I haven't met before or I'm seeing some familiar faces, I'm Clara and I manage our educator community programs here at Adobe and we have a great show for you today. So we are just around the corner from Adobe Max. So for those who are unfamiliar, you're going to learn a little bit about Adobe Max here in a moment. But the good news is Adobe Max is an international conference for all kinds of creators that's going to be available online free of charge October 26th through 28th. Um, so stay tuned to learn a little bit more about that. But if you're just tuning in from Adobe for Education, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, please post in the chat where you're joining us from. Uh, we already have Adobe Creative Educators joining us in from Morocco and from Egypt. Welcome. Again, if you're just joining in, this is a live show. Welcome from Petaluma, from California from Tunisia, so international, our community. Um, please, again, post in the chat, and we'd love to connect with you. Um, the live show, and every week we go through the creative process of define, create, and reflect. Um, so we'll be going through that process with you today, and this is also a process that you can um, practice with your students as well. So again, today we have a great show, a special preview of Adobe Max uh, coming up with a um, very special guest, uh, Laura McBain, who's joining us from the Stanford D School, and Tacey Trowbridge from the Adobe Education team, uh, who leads education, thought leadership, and policy. So I'll just bring them on now um, to introduce themselves. Welcome, Tacey and Laura. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, so excited to be here, Clara. Thanks so much. Thank you, Claire. It's exciting to see everyone rolling in from around the globe, from folks from California, St. Augustine, Florida, which is not that far from where I, my family lives. So it's just wonderful to see everyone um, rolling in from different places around the around the, the globe here this morning. Thank you. Absolutely. And just to get uh, started, um, Laura, I would love for you to introduce yourself and share a little bit more about your background. Sure. Um, Thank you. So I am the co-director of the K-12 lab and also the co-managing director of the Stanford D School. And what that means and what that title means is I really, my job is really focused primarily on how we design experiments, bold ideas that are going to change education and, and the world. And so I myself have been an educator. I've been a high school teacher, middle school teacher, principal, and so I see myself as an educational designer, someone who is always thinking about how we might use design to obliterate opportunity gaps and think about how we serve our students who are most needed. Our K-12 lab at the Stanford D School, essentially what we do is we operate as a lab. We design experiments that really try to highlight some of the challenges that are happening in education and design very interesting ways to solve those challenges. So some of the challenges and um, experiments that we've done this past over the last number of years is one is looking at assessments. Uh, one of the challenges, of course, around assessment is the linear approach, multiple choice way of thinking about um, how students learn. And what we decided is like understanding collaborations, measuring creativity, is probably not sometimes best measured by a multiple choice test. And so what our lab did instead is we actually created uh, formative and summative resources for educators to use in their classroom um, to help young people understand and measure how they're collaborating, how they're measuring creativity, how they're communicating with others. All of this wrapped into what we call an escape room and how we can actually help young people use escape rooms to uh, measure their own creativity and collaboration. And we've got all those resources, but that's just one of the many experiments um, that our lab has done to kind of think about how we reimagine um, different aspects of education to make equitable impact. That is incredible to hear all of the different exciting things you're working on. And I know you're gonna share some of those in a bit here. And I love that phrase that design can obliterate Oh, it looks like we've lost Clara for a oh, second, but that was a good one. <laughs> there we are. Perfect. It was real live. So it's it's the joy real of a live, a live stream show. Um, but I was just saying, uh, Laura, that I, I love that phrase that um, design can help obliterate the, the opportunity gap and provide more opportunities for students. So we're looking forward to, to seeing more ways um, that educators can implement that in their classroom. 
And um, Tasty, before we, we dive in a bit deeper about Adobe Max, uh, would love for folks to hear kind of um, at a high level, um, what does thought leadership mean at Adobe and, and policy and education? Well, the thought leadership at Adobe, what we're really doing is looking at why we teach creativity, why these skills matter. We've just launched some really exciting new research looking at the ways in which we can quantify the impact of teaching creative skills, both in the classroom and institutions, and then as students enter their careers. Um, so really exciting work. We're perpetually working with amazing partners, like folks like the D School, to understand their approach. I love the work on assessment that you're doing, Laura. That's wonderful. Uh, but I have the a privilege to really dive into research, to partner with other folks, and then to explore examples of really best practices within classrooms, to learn from educators and students. So it's, it's a really exciting opportunity to learn more about a topic I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm a former classroom teacher, also of a background that's somewhat similar to Laura's. And so education is the space that I am most interested in, in finding the, the ways in which we can really prepare students with the skills that are essential as they go into a changing world, uh, as they go into futures beyond education. We're looking forward to hearing more about that. And as you were sharing some of those updates, TC, um, I see some more folks who have joined in. We have um, joining us from Baltimore and from Egypt. Uh, welcome to the Adobe Creative Educator community. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts as we share more about the Adobe Max preview um, with special guest Laura McBain um, from the Stanford uh, D School K-12 Lab. So speaking of Adobe Max, um, it's just around the corner, and I know that it's going to be October 26th um, through 28th. And Tacey, can you share a little bit more about what Adobe Max is, this very special event we all gear up towards every year, and what the education track is um, in particular? Great. Well, Max is an incredible experience. It is the largest creativity conference in the world. It is free and available online. Uh, so it's, we invite you all to join in. There's, there's really something for everyone there. Uh, what you'll hear from practitioners and professionals and educators uh, all about creativity. We're covering lots within the education track this year. Um, where you will see, you'll hear from all sorts of folks. Uh, you'll hear from Laura, our guest. She'll tell us a little bit more about that. But also from things like Rebecca Hare, we'll be talking about how to build a, a classroom that really supports creativity with the physical layout and design or the virtual layout and design. You'll hear a lot about digital storytelling and the power of storytelling from folks like Frank Cessna, who, um, Cessna, who is the, he's, he's an incredible journalist from CNN who's devoted the rest of the current part of his career to telling stories about climate change and to empowering students to be able to tell stories. You'll hear from Joe Dombrowski, also a master storyteller for, for the K-12 space. You'll hear from um, folks who've been doing really interesting research around the readability of digital text. Uh, we've got lots of research about fixed text and printed text, but digital text plays such an important role in our lives right now. And it's been exciting to look at some of the recent research. So you'll, you'll be able to find out about um, readability. And then some great sessions that are focused on topics like um, teaching photography, uh, stories, and native representation from Taylor Irvine, uh, who's partnered with us around a project with National Geographic. So I invite you to come check out these sessions. They are designed for educators. You'll find uh, on the day that they premiere, you'll find chat from folks all over the world. So really a great opportunity to engage in ideas that are that are important to you and that will help with your and that'll help your students. Finally, one really exciting thing about Max, sign up, you can register for all sorts of sessions, but if you can't make it to a particular session, the sessions will persist. So you can go back at any time and dive into something that you've missed, rewatch something, share it with your students if you find that that'll be helpful. But we've just seen um, really exciting growth within Max. And I think the other thing I'll say is that the education audience at Max is huge. <laughs> I think we had more than 70,000 educators participating last year. So you will find students and educators from around the world learning about digital media, but also learning about pedagogy, learning about teaching, learning about uh, ways in which we can really incorporate some of these essential skills and best practices into classrooms. 
Well, we're really looking forward to that. And I just um, shared that link below, Tacey, um, adobe.ly slash maxedu. So if you're looking for the particular education track and how to get started at Adobe Max, where to sign up, um, it's completely free event. Um, again, mm -hmm. so from October 26th through 28th, um, be sure to join us. You can connect with educators all around the world. And it's so special um, now too. And, and Tacey, I know you and I have been to Max before in the past in person and is in Los Angeles and you would fly in and it's so much more accessible now. And any student, yeah. any teacher, like it's, it's free and it's online and anyone can join. So um, we're really looking forward to that to that programming. You're right, Claire. It's been, it was so important to make Max available more broadly. We saw so much more participation from educators, from a wider range of educators. And as we go forward, we're planning to continue to have Max be available for free and online for educators. Um, so to come, join us this year and we look forward to many more years with you uh, celebrating creativity. And speaking of some of the content at Adobe Max, um, we are very excited uh, to host Laura McBain, who's here with us today, um, who's the K-12 Director of Community and Implementation and um, the Interim Managing Director at the Stanford D School in California for the K-12 Lab. Um, Laura, can you share a little bit more about um, the projects at the K-12 Lab at a high level and some of the work that you're focusing on? Yeah, and we're really excited about presenting our work at Adobe Max. We've been, you know, eagerly using that as an opportunity to kind of solidify some of our projects and get them out into the world. Um, and maybe we'll put the link into our resources. I, one of the things that we really pride ourselves at the D School um, and at the K twelve Lab is, in particular, making all of our resources free and accessible and downloadable for people to to have. And so we spend a significant amount of time putting together resources where educators can take and use design within their classroom, all centered on this idea of how do we actually cultivate creative courage, creative problem solving. Um, most recently, our actual executive director just published a book called Creative Acts for Curious People. Um, it is online, we can share the link with you, um, but it is a book that allows everyone to actually do small acts of creativity within their classrooms, within their communities, so that we can actually practice our creative muscle in new and different ways and radical ways where everyone has access to be to be creative, to be curious. And so this is a new, um, literally just published this past month. Um, it's available, you can grab it, you can buy it. Um, but each one of the resources and also the activities are actually also on available on the D-School as well. So you can download different lesson plans. But we really pride ourselves in creating resources that educators can take and use within their classroom. At the K-12 Lab, um, we spent a significant amount of time looking at where are the places in education where we can actually apply design methodologies and creative problem solving to some of the big, wicked, sticky challenges facing K-12 education. And um, maybe I can get into our session at Adobe Max, would that be okay? <laughs> um, so one of the big areas um, that we've been playing with is this around emerging technology about how do we ensure that every young person and every educator understands emerging technology. And we'll share a little bit, I'll share some slides in a minute, but how we can actually help people understand what emerging technology is and how it is shaping the lives in which we, um, we live. Well, we're really looking forward to this uh, session, and I know you'll dive into that, um, Laura. And I just posted the um, Creative Acts for Curious People, uh, where you can access it on the D School website. Um, so I'm seeing folks um, post in the comments here. Um, Timothy Cosgrove says, "Good afternoon, everyone joining from Toronto. Looking forward to Adobe Max. Hi, Timothy. It's great to see you." And Kubin joining us from Johannesburg. Uh, welcome. So we're um, looking forward to collaborating with you at Max as well. Well, that actually brings me um, to the second part of our live stream. So as you know, we go through the process of define, create, and reflect. So we'll move towards our create portion. Um, so speaking of the uh, session that's coming up, uh, Laura, I'll hand it off to you to, sh to share your screen, to walk through a little bit more in depth of some of the key takeaways that um, educators will see from the session. You got it. So I'll do my best. Uh, as we all know, we're continuing. I hope you can all see that of what we're showing here. Great. Thank you. Um, and so one of the things that, as I said, kind of briefly, is thinking about um, within the K-12 space, this question of 
how we can actually think about play, reflection and equity um, and how emerging technology actually kind of shows up in our lives. And we came upon this title called Rep, which is about representation. If we want technology to actually be equitable, then it must represent all of us. And so we really spend a lot of time thinking about, well, what are the new skills? What are the new technologies that are shaping the world in which we live? And we realized, particularly around the pandemic, that we were all shot into a cannon around technology and it's radically shaping our lives. And yet we spend very little time in K-12 actually teaching our young people about the key concepts, the implications of technology and how it is either intentionally or unintentionally designed to support and represent everyone. So we came up with REP. Um, and we think about this question a lot around, you know, this idea that technology is really radically changing. Um, emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, synthetic biology, um, near orbit design. I actually was on a plane yesterday and I met a researcher who is actually designing modules for synthetic materials uh, that live on the lunar surface. These are things that are happening in our lifetime. And how do we actually make our, encourage and support our young people and our educators to explore what these technologies are, but also probably more importantly, understand the implications of how these technologies play in our lives and the potential that they could cause harm as well as have radical benefits, right? They're always in tension with each other. And so we know this is happening to all of us. And yet, how do we all become better informed? We have a saying at the D school um, that you don't need to be a coder. You just have to know what the code can do. And so we believe everybody is a technologist. And so what we realized is there is this need as designers to really think about how we support everyone. And so we came up with this magazine, which we're going to be exploring and doing and diving into during Adobe Max, um, this magazine called Rep. The cover that you see is done by David Albo. He is a... Um, a Ghana artist, um, and he designed this idea of how we actually can use technology from different perspectives. And Rep is an analog magazine. You literally can pull it apart, write in it. Um, anyone can have access to it where people can understand key concepts around emerging technology. The very first issue is around bots. Bots that live in our houses, bots that actually surround us, and yet we spend little time actually understanding how bots are actually made who designs them and how they show up in our lives, the algorithms of our lives. And so um, the session that we're gonna be having in this month is really gonna explore REF, but then give people an opportunity to understand how to build a bot, how we as designers, as educators have the capacity to shape emerging technologies by understanding our own positionalities, our social status and how those show up in the tools that we're building and the, and the tools that our young people will continue to build and put into the world. Um, and so this session is gonna be exploring rep um, and really thinking about what we might do to help young people build a better world through rep um, and through technology, but ultimately how they become great designers and equitable designers of technology and using their own creative muscles to create tools that matter and tools that are impactful and helpful and do not cause harm. I'm really looking forward to, to getting that magazine and just playing through it and seeing all the different uh, content and actually being able to think through the different creative process to build a bot. And I love, Laura, how you said that we're, you know, all technologists. Like, I know a lot of educators uh, might not think of themselves that way, but really breaking it down and, and applying it to, to any subject area or grade level. And I'll actually go ahead, I, I posted the link to um, the actual session. So if you're interested in joining the session that's coming up at Adobe Max, again, if you're just joining in, um, it's adobe.ly slash max edu session. Again, free um, conference um, October 26th through 28th with a special track for educators. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, joining us um, from the Stanford D School, um, Laura McBain and also be joined by Aria Mugos, um, who will also be joining us as well. And Laura, I know you're talking about the rep, uh, magazine. I'll go ahead and share my screen of the actual website. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about it and um, you know what educators can access. Yeah, so this is our, our starter website. The issue is actually launching this month. Um, and if you'll scroll down, there's a sign-up form that people can look at 
and you can get into kind of what are the each issues. The very first issue of rep um, is going to be focused on um, artificial intelligence, bots within our lives. The second issue, and you can kind of scroll down in a different spot, is looking at really um, synthetic biology. So we're looking at how synthetic mm -hmm. biology shows up in our lives. The third issue is going to be focused on blockchain. And then the last one is going to be focused on DNA data storage, which I had no mm -hmm. idea what that was before we started doing this issues. And so if you scroll up to the about page, this is a sign up form um, because literally within the next couple of weeks, there will be the issues will be online and people can buy them. They can take them. They can download them for their classrooms and their schools. But Rep really is a, is a magazine and it invites this idea that we all are technologists that it's not about being a coder, it's knowing what the code can do. We also believe that like technology is personal, is that students bring their identities, their positionalities to digital spaces, and how do we prioritize that in maker spaces, in technology classrooms, in media classrooms? It's really important for us. And then lastly for us, we believe that technology surrounds our lives and it shapes our identities and how we show up in the world. And so we believe that technology needs to represent all of us. We have folks right now today from all over the globe. And that means folks speak with a, a different language, with a different accent, all the things that come up, they show up in our technology. And how do we ensure moving forward that the technology that we are, that are interacting our lives, that's shaping how we interact with the world actually is equitable, is accessible, is representative of the fabric of the world. And so we believe this tech, this rep magazine is an opportunity to not just get young people to understand some emerging technologies, but to become better designers, to be designers that believe in inclusivity, that designers that seek diverse voices, designers that understand that technology is not just making sure we can build it, but should we build it? Mm -hmm. And if we build it, what are the long-term implications of this work? We are sitting at a time right now where DNA is being gathered on all of us in different ways, whether it's CRISPR, uh, looking at kind of things how impacting our DNA, understanding our lives. And yet we're asking these questions right now is should we be understanding this? What are the policies around this? What are the privacy implications? These are the type of conversations that need to move from the boardroom, but to the classroom, because the young people that are actually going to be in most impacted by this stuff is actually the one people that we're serving today. So how do we help our educators? How do we help our young people become right better technologists so that the world that they continue to live in and we will live in, right, will be more accessible, will be more equitable, and that the technology that we use will represent all of us. And so that's the core of REP. Um, it is, again, completely analog. People can download it because we think we know the one thing that we've learned during the technology and especially during COVID is not everyone has the same access to technology. Not everyone has certain tools. So how do we create an analog tool that all you need is a pen and a paper to understand blockchain, to understand synthetic bio. You don't need to actually make sure I know all the, the Python code, but literally have a piece of paper that allows you to understand how this technology works and how you can make it better. Laura, you make me, it I makes me so optimistic for the future to think about all of these students who are who can experience this in a way yeah. that helps them be critical thinkers and critical yeah. creators, critical consumers. Yeah. And to think about technology, not just for the, the fact that what it can do is cool, but to think about the implications of it. And yeah. should we do this? And I think this is such important work. I thank you for doing it and for leading this and then yeah. for sharing it in a way that is accessible and available for students and educators. And I, I think as someone who spent a lot of time in maker spaces, and I, my hunch is that we have probably a lot of Adobe educators who think of themselves as makers as well, mm -hmm. is, is someone who gets excited about new things. We just want to bring it in and we want our students to be excited. And that's really important. We want students to be building with technology and having play with it. But at the same time, we still need to be asking our questions. Who this will benefit? Who might this harm? How do we continue to have those type of conversations in our maker spaces, in our technology classes, because those are part of technology design, right? The implications is part of the design process. And I, I agree with you, Tacey, is that this is an optimistic uh, view of where we might go and yet um, a really needed one. We're seeing the ramifications of, of lacking of implication design right now in our lives. And so how do we really start now with the young people in classrooms today 
who can think of themselves and behave like equitable, impactful designers as they move throughout the world. Um, and that's our role in education, right? Is to re really support young people um, in becoming the shapers of the future. And so for us at the D School, we feel like providing more tools that allow them to flex their creative muscle, to think about different ways um, that technology or classrooms or learning can be designed so that it is representative, so that it is equitable, so that it is exciting, right? Um, is our charge and it, what lights us up um, and keeps us moving every single day. I know there are a lot of educators um, that are tuning in that are also really looking forward to helping shape their students to be equitable and impactful designers, as you said. Um, and we have a few more folks that have joined in from Pakistan. Um, also looking forward to Adobe Max. Uh, Timothy is going to class now. He said, thank you. Uh, creative Informant live stream, but I'll go to class. Um, so nice to see you, Timothy. And um, thank you, um, Catalino, for joining us from the Philippines. Uh, and Kuvin says, very engrossing discussion. So we're looking forward to seeing how uh, you'll use uh, mag.org. Again, uh, Laura, and as Tacey also said, this is um, such incredible that it's an analog resource. Um, you know, really focusing on bringing this to, to every student, um, no matter what um, uh, what they have, what kind of technology they have. It's just all you need, as you said, is a pen and paper um, to be able to um, uncover some of these more complex terms like blockchain and, and other um, technological terms. So really encourage you to check out repbag.org. Um, and uh, which brings us to our very last um, part of the uh, live stream, uh, where we always end with a reflect. Um, so again, we go through the creative process. As all of you know, in uh, the Adobe Creative Educator community of Define, Create, and Reflect. So our reflection question is uh, pretty simple for today. We just want to know what you're looking forward to um, mm -hmm. the most during Adobe Max. Um, so be sure to share that um, with us with the hashtag Adobe EDU Creative, whether you're on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, um, we continue to, to um, have that discussion. And what's the beauty of this live stream show is even though we have it every uh, Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, you can always catch the recording if you're watching this recording um, uh, and continue the discussion with that hashtag. So with that, um, Laura and Tacey, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are really looking forward to Adobe Max. And anything else you'd like to add before we uh, finish our um, live stream session today? Just to say thank you, Clara. It's so great to be here. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to at Max. I'm looking for inspiration. I'm looking to learn uh, and to connect with educators around the world. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see everyone. I'm excited to dive in. And I, I'm just excited about this community of educators, actually, of people that are super, I'm, I'm loving the chat of like having people saying I'm very creative, and I'm ready to dive in. And I think that is, um, that is the ground, I think the groundswell for how we actually really change the world together is through community. And so it's exciting to see people from all over the, the world that are excited about creativity, that are excited about equity, and that are excited about really thinking about how they put creativity into the hands and cultivate the creativity um, with their young people. So I'm excited to, to meet everyone and also just really grateful to be a part of this community. So thank you, Clara. Thank you both. And again, we're looking forward to, to Adobe Max uh, coming up the 26th through the 28th. And um, we'll be live again next um, Thursday, continuing our Creativity in the Clouds tour. And then after that, we'll be featuring only Adobe Max. Um, so if you're familiar with some of our evangelists, um, Jason Levine and Paul Tranny, we're going to have both of them on the show in different episodes coming up. Um, but thank you to all of you for joining here today. I know that the school year can be um, a lot of activity going on, lesson planning, uh, grading, and being with your students. So we appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise in the chat um, with all of us today. So thanks again, and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.